It's the man himself, John Podesta, for his first interview since the presidential election. Mr. Podesta, welcome back to Meet the Press, sir. Good morning, Chuck. Uh, let me start with this question. Do you believe this was a free and fair election? Well, look, I think the Russians clearly intervened in the election, and I think that uh, the now we know that both the CIA, the Director of National Intelligence, the FBI all agree uh, that the Russians intervened to help Trump, uh, and that, uh, as they have noted this week, uh, NBC first revealed uh, that uh, Vladimir Putin was personally involved with that. So I think that people went to the polls, they cast their votes. Uh, Hillary Clinton got 2.9 billion more votes than, the, than Donald Trump, but you know, Donald Trump is claiming the Electoral College victory and, and uh, you know, tomorrow the electors will get to vote. You didn't answer the question. Do you believe this was a free and fair election? Well, I think it was, uh, I think it was distorted by the Russian intervention, let's put it that way. And what does distorted mean? How should, let me ask you this then. So you, they, you brought, a, a, foreign, a foreign adversary directly intervened into our democratic institution mm -hmm. and tried to tilt the election to Donald Trump. I think that if you look back and see what happened over the course of the last uh, few weeks, you see the way the votes broke. Um, you know, I was highly critical of the way the FBI, uh, particularly the FBI, uh, the FBI director uh, managed the situation with respect uh, to the Russian engagement versus uh, Hillary Clinton's emails. I, I think that all had an effect on the election. You, in the op-ed, put a lot more weight on what Mr. Comey did in the last 11 days than anything else. Um, so if, well, I think which, independent which, analysts, Nate Silver and others, have Which do you have believe argued, had more actual impact? Well, Russia's what, hacking what, or the FBI? What I said was baffling, Chuck, was... Uh, on October 7th, as the, uh, as the Director of National Intelligence, Jim Clapper, uh, Jay Johnson, the Director of Homeland Security, went out and said the Russians are trying to interfere in our election, uh, Director Comey counseled against that. Uh, he said, I don't want my, the FBI's name on that. Then three weeks later, uh, he went out and uh, dropped the infamous letter just 11 days before the election, uh, saying that he was going to uh, take an, yet another look at, at Hillary Clinton's uh, emails because of the, uh, uh, the laptop that he had uh, gotten from uh, Huma Abedin's husband, uh, Anthony Weiner. So uh, how can you have that both ways? I think that even in their defense, no one disputed those facts. And October 7th, he's saying to say the Russians are involved, which the American people, I think, had a right to know, uh, was too political. 11 days out, he drops this bombshell into the election. Uh, and then just a week later, uh, says, well, we looked at it and there's nothing to it. So he had the opportunity to do that in private. He didn't do it. I think that uh, Democrats and Republicans who have served in the Justice Department criticized him at the time. So yes, I think he had a big effect on this election. You know, it's interesting in your op-ed, you asked for uh, a, a few things. It was pretty uh, direct. You were hoping for uh, a, a Russian hack, a hacking investigation a little more. You want to see intelligence declassified, should quickly declassified. President Obama said a lot of it is classified, it's not going to provide it. Um, you believe the FBI fail, uh, did not adequately respond to the DNC hack. Attorney General Lynch said the investigation isn't even over. And then when it comes to the Electoral College, you said the, you would like to see the administration brief members of the Electoral College right. on the intelligence. President Obama mm -hmm. said yesterday, it's not my hands now, it's up to them. Do you feel as if the Obama administration is sort of abandoning your efforts right now? Well, look, I think the Obama administration is doing what it thinks it's the right thing to do. So that's their judgments and that's the, uh, their call. Are they making the right when I, call? When I said uh, that 70 members, bipartisan members of the Electoral College have asked to be briefed, mm -hmm. uh, Nick Kristof wrote this morning uh, in the New York Times that uh, it's not that Putin and, and, and Trump were colluding uh, to affect the election. It's that the Russians were trying to elect a lapdog. But I would argue that there's very, uh, it's very much... Uh, uh, unknown whether there was collusion. I think Russian uh, diplomats have said post-election that they were talking to the to uh, the Trump campaign. Uh, uh, Roger Stone in August uh, s foreshadowed the fact that they had hacked my emails and those would be forthcoming uh, when he said that he was in touch with Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. Uh, Carter Page, uh, one of Trump's uh, foreign policy advisors, uh, went to Russia before the Republican uh, convention and met with the person uh, in uh, the uh, Russian hierarchy who was responsible for collecting intelligence. So I think really uh, not what Mr. Trump knew, but what did Trump Inc. know and when did they know it? Uh, were they in touch with the Russians? I think those are still open questions and the, and the electors have a right to know what the answers are if, if, the, 
if the U.S. government has those answers before the election. That's also why I said there needs to be an independent investigation into All right. this. We are basically in 24 hours the presidential election officially occurs. Um, people don't fully realize that, but I think they're learning now tomorrow at noon in many state capitals this is going to take place. Um, what would you like to see the electors do? Well, look, I, I think that's a that's a judgment for them. I think we haven't uh, tried to influence what what uh, electors will do. I assume that our electors are going to uh, vote uh, for Hillary Clinton. But the question is whether uh, there are 37 Republican electors who think that uh, that uh, either there are open questions or that uh, Donald Trump, based on uh, everything we know about him, is is uh, really unfit to be president of the United States. And if they do, then they'll throw it to the House of Representatives. There are certain. Uh supporters of yours that say the best route is for you to call on all of Hillary Clinton's electors to support somebody like John Kasich or Mitt Romney or even Mike Pence uh, know, in order I, to lure 37 I, others over. I, I know that, Chuck, but really the question is, are the 37 Republicans not what really what the Democrats are are, are going to do? And, and I guess we'll know that at noon tomorrow. I guess a rolling noon tomorrow because I think right. they vote it's at noon, noon each across, of the time zones. across the time zone. So I guess when the Hawaiian electors are done voting, we'll, we'll know the final outcome. You know, it was interesting to hear the president say he um, directly asked Putin to cut it out. A month later is when your emails start getting released to the public. The president also said if he had gotten too aggressive about this during the election, he'd have been accused of, of tipping the scales. And he mentioned the fact that at the time Donald Trump was questioning um, parts of the election. Do you think the president, President Obama, was cowed by Trump? Well, I think he, no, I think he was, uh, he was uh, using uh, his judgment. Uh, he briefed the uh, bipartisan, he had his people brief the bipartisan leadership, Mitch McConnell evidently. Uh, argued against a public statement, a bipartisan public statement. Uh, they did release the statement on October 7th from uh, Director Clapper and, and, and Secretary Johnson saying the Russians were trying to interfere. Uh, you know, do I, in retrospect, wish they had done more? Sure, of course I do. Mm -hmm. But I think that they were trying to uh, render their best judgment about what was uh, appropriate. And I think that there's a lot you know, I'm not saying that, that it's everybody else's fault. We bear responsibility for the outcome as well. I know that. Mm -hmm. uh, but the media uh, didn't cover itself with glory on the way uh, they uh, uh, handled, I think, the matter. Uh, uh, the New York Times reported this week, and their own reporting said that they became an instrument for Russian intelligence. Uh, and, and so, you know, I think we'll all uh, ought to... Uh, Take a lesson from this, look at it. Most importantly, investigate what actually well, happened and put that out to the American public. Declassify as much as possible, do it through an independent investigation, and then everybody will feel like uh, we've learned whatever lessons there are from 2016. We'll move forward so it doesn't happen again. This is your personal account that was hacked. I gotta think you're getting updates on the investigation that others would not. What can you share? Uh, I, I will share this with you, Chuck. The first time I was contacted by the FBI uh, was two days after WikiLeaks started dropping my emails. Wait, let me pause the here. First, the first... Two days after. Two days after. So October 7th, Wiki... October 7th, mm -hmm. let's go through the chronology. Yes. On October 7th, the Access Hollywood tape right. comes out. <clears throat> One hour later, WikiLeaks starts dropping my emails uh, into the public. One could say that there might have... Those things might not have been a coincidence. Okay. Uh, two days later, the FBI contacted me, and the first thing the agent said to me was, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but your email account had, might have been hacked. When did I said, you yes. know? Yeah, I said, yes, I was aware of that. But when were, when were you aware that you had been hacked? Uh, I think, uh, I think that I was, uh, it, I, it was confirmed on October 7th in some of the DNC uh, Dr uh, dumps that had occurred earlier, Early, yeah. and uh, other uh, campaign officials also had their emails divulged mm -hmm. earlier than October 7th. But in one of those DMC dumps, there was a document that 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 appeared to me was that appeared and came might have come from my account. So I wasn't sure. I didn't know. I didn't know what they had, what they didn't have. It wasn't until October 7th when uh, Assange uh, both. Uh, it really in his first statements uh, said things that were incorrect but started dumping them out and said they were going to all dump out. That's when I knew that they, they had the contents of my, uh, my email account. When history is written about this election. By the way, uh, yes. that was the last time I talked to the FBI. And you asked me. You have still you asked me, not you asked heard me, from the FBI you asked since? Me, you asked me when, yeah. uh, when did, uh, how, am I getting additional briefings? That, that was the first and last time I so talked October to the FBI. So October 9th, 
is the last time you have heard from the FBI at all. Yes. You have not got an update on the My, investigation to your personal email. That, that is correct. Uh, do you expect to get a phone call before, uh, before the end of the year? Maybe before the end of the show. Um, <laughs> let me ask you, when the history of this election is written, is it how much is Russia, how much is Comey, and how much is, say, the fact that you didn't make one visit to the state of Wisconsin after the convention? Look, I think that, you know, it, it, um, I actually think that, that you know, we ought uh, the uh, people are asking for a full accounting of what happened, what, where do we spend our money, what do we do, mm -hmm. and I think that's fair. Uh, and should be forthcoming. You want to do an autopsy yeah, of I think your so. decision making. Yeah. I think that uh, in, in, if you uh, remember in, in 2012, mm -hmm. the Republicans took till March because the data doesn't yeah. come in. You can't see it until then. So it'll take a while. But I think uh, we owe it to, uh, to our supporters to say what, what we think we did right, what we think we did wrong. Uh, I think Wisconsin, uh, we could have done better. There's no question about it. I think in the, it, we had twice as many staff in Wisconsin and Michigan that Obama did. Uh, but I think we, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and we sent, you know, Tim Kaine was there, others were there. Hillary did not go back to Wisconsin. Right. Um, but I think that, uh, I think in the end of the day, we also lost Pennsylvania. We, there was nothing we left on, you know, uh, undone there, and we still lost by 44,000 votes. In total, those three states, we lost by less than 80,000 votes. And as I said, we won the uh, popular vote by 2.9 million votes. So I think we did a lot of things right. Uh, we were up against a uh, very difficult media environment. And, uh, but there, uh, there's no question that, that we didn't make every right decision. All right, very quickly, you just you had an interesting uh, lunch on Friday. Yeah. Uh, the chiefs of staff, former White House chiefs of staff, all got together yeah. to meet with uh, the incoming chief of staff, Reince Priebus. What advice did you give them? Well, I told them that uh, uh, a, a couple of things. Uh, it was a private meeting, so I, I really don't want to go too, too mm -hmm. in-depth in, into it. Uh, but there were Republican and Democratic former chiefs. Mm -hmm. I think we all respect the Office of the Presidency. Uh, we all want uh, Mr. Priebus to succeed in the jobs that we held. I think we all gave him uh, advice about, uh, and I, it was interesting, I think, w one of the things he got from the Republicans about was his unique role in protecting that office of the presidency as he comes in, as we all, all had to share that responsibility. Uh, in, in my case, I, I, I told him that I think that uh, one of the things that makes the White House work or do not work uh, is whether the chief of staff and the national security advisor are really in harness. When they're not, the wagon goes off the cliff. When they are, I think, uh, you know, things can work rather, rather smoothly. So it's up to him to, to make that relationship work. John Podesta, campaign chair uh, for Hillary Clinton's campaign. Appreciate you spending a little Sunday morning here. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, Chuck. Enjoy the new year. Yeah, thanks. Coming up, more on Russia's hacking. From